praise God. Since the year 325, Easter has always been celebrated on the first Sunday past the full moon that represents the vernal equinox. The full moon we just experienced day before yesterday is the reason that Easter is observed today. That means that it could fall as early, early as March the 22nd or as late as April the 25th. Uh, this year it's rather late in your calendar. The early Christians celebrated it the first day of the week. Uh, up until the year 325, those that celebrated it celebrated it on the same, the 14th day of the month of Nisan or April. But regardless of when you celebrate it, it is important to you only if you believe it. Only if it is real to you is it important. There are many that celebrate Easter for a reason other than the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It is a day on the calendar. It is an event. It is a time for family to get together. But today, we celebrate it for one reason and one reason only. We celebrate it today as the, the reminder and the remembrance of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. There is one question that guides us today. Did Jesus really come back to life? We would answer aloud, yes. But that is the question that guides what we do today, and it guides the basis for where you and I are spiritually in our walk of life. Would you find in your copy of God's Word, would you find the book of Mark? I've got it printed on the screen for us in just a few minutes. So if you don't have a copy of God's Word, it will be read for you. Find it on your phone, your tablet, maybe even uh, in your printed copy of God's Word. But find the 16th chapter of the book of Mark. For today, I would want to share with us encouragement about life after the resurrection. You and I were not present at the resurrection of Christ, but we can have life now, and we can have it as Jesus described it more abundantly. We can have real life. So if you'll allow me for just a few moments to, to share with us how we can have life after the resurrection. Mark's gospel ends with a unique part of the resurrection story. Today I would like to read it as we study it. Not another book in the world like the one you're holding. In honor of God and His Word, would you stand? Show your favorite neighbor where Mark chapter 16 is. And follow along either in your copy of God's Word or on the screen behind me. Mark chapter 16, and if you're at verse 1, say, I'm there. I'm there. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, they brought spices so that they might anoint Jesus' body. And very early, verse 2, on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb, and they asked each other, who's going to roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled away. And as they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. And he said in verse 6, don't be alarmed. You're looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. Oh, he has risen. My Bible has an exclamation point. He is not here. See the place where they laid him, but now go tell his disciples and notice that your copy of God's Word says, and Peter, that he's going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. Pray with me if you would. Father, would you please bless the reading of your Word, the study of your Word, and would you allow us today to be drawn closer to you, I pray. And I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you and be seated. 
Each of the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, each give a different perspective, a different look at the resurrection of Jesus. Each one tells us about how there were some that came each morning, I mean each part of the morning of that first sunrise service to the tomb, and they would look in or they would talk with the angel. And each one had, a, had an interesting but very different relationship with the resurrected Jesus Christ and the angel that was there for him. In the same way that each one of us has a unique, different relationship with Jesus Christ. There may be some here that have known Christ for a long time, years and years. And there may be some that have known Christ for only a short period of time. There are some that that have a walk with Christ that is very evident. There may be some of us here today that our walk with Christ is not as visible, and that's okay. It's, it's that our relationship with God is unique and individual. Today, I would like for us to just think through those that were there that first Easter morning. And I would like to see that they had life after the resurrection and that you and I can as well. And there's no, diff, no uh, definitive way to know everything that happened to the disciples but we can take from a couple of snapshots we can see that the resurrected savior made a difference in their life and i'm going to ask you today to allow the resurrected savior to make a difference in your life to give jesus christ the risen king the opportunity to reveal himself to you maybe in a new way maybe in a more personal way Maybe in a very special touch in an area of your life that you need it. Maybe in a broad and, and loud and thunderous way, God may speak to you and reveal himself to you. Or maybe just through that still, small, quiet voice, through only the peace that he can provide, he'll reveal himself to you. There's no doubt that, that there was a change in the disciples' life. Because right, right at the crucifixion, they were a very scattered group of people. In fact, we find them discouraged, hiding up in the upper room. We find Peter denying Jesus, hiding in the dark shadows and not with the rest of the disciples. We find that they were discouraged. We find they were depressed that, that who they had followed for the last three years, they thought was still lying in a tomb, dead, his life finished they were extremely dispersed in fact we really don't even have record as to where they all were as Jesus was being placed in that tomb they were scattered people but but something happened something changed we know today that that change took place because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ we know that that each of the disciples in some way oh they reorganized their own life recommitted their own life each one in their own way made a difference for the risen Savior each one left his occupation and 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 followed after the teachings of Jesus and began to teach others about Jesus we know that each one for the most part lost their life because they believed in Jesus they went from being a, a discouraged, de de depressed, and dispersed people to being very active and on fire for God. And I would say to you, what God desires from each one of us that know the risen Savior is to be on fire, active in our relationship with Him. There are many things that I am uncertain of this morning, but there are two, and based upon this passage, I would like to call your attention to them. I would like to say that first of all, I know this, and you do too. I know, number one, that Christ died on a cross for our sins. He died on a cross for my sin, and He died on a cross for your sin. Extra biblical documents show that. I was given by, by Kevin, I was given an article from the, the journal, the American Medical Association, the Journal of the American Medical Association that talked about some of the things that Jesus would have gone through. Some of the things that he would have experienced it and have experienced having, 
uh, what happened to him on the way to the cross and then on the cross. The article from that journal said that Jesus would have experienced something called hematidrosis, which is a high degree of physical stress that releases chemicals uh, in your bloodstream that break down the capillaries and, and they, they cause the sweat glands to actually receive blood so that a person could actually bleed through his sweat glands, giving proof that Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane could have very easily, when he was praying, Father, let this cup pass from me if possible, but not my will, yours be done. He could have very easily have bled sweat drops of blood. That article talked about hypovolemic shock, low volume blood. That because of the beating that Jesus took on the way to the cross, that he could have lost enough blood that on the cross he would have experienced what he could have thought would have been his last dying breath. Many died receiving much less punishment than Jesus did on the way to the cross. That article talked about respiratory acidosis where carbon dioxide in the blood is dissolved and it turns into carbon acid. And that acid causes an irregular heartbeat so that the person's mind is still sharp, but they can feel their heart gradually beating slower and slower to the point to where they could actually feel each pound of the heart knowing right before the heart stopped even knowing that it had stopped thus giving Jesus the the basis for being able to say father into your hands I commit my spirit it is finished and, and I, I I'm not a doctor so all of those did not register with me but I'm even more certain that he died on our on a cross for our sins for for these four reasons you might can relate to these number one I'm convinced Jesus died on a cross for my sins because someone told me about it one time someone from my childhood told me the story of Jesus oh it it could have been for you a Sunday school teacher. It could have been a, a parent or a grandparent. It could have been a friend. It could have been a, an RA's, GA's, a WANA teacher. Somebody from, it could have been during vacation Bible school. It could have been a pastor. Someone, it could have been a stranger that walked up to you and told you the story of Jesus. But someone from your past told you, I'm not the first one to tell you. You're here today because you've heard the name Jesus Christ. And you already knew that today we celebrate the risen Savior. I'm certain that he did because someone told me about it. I'm certain that he did secondly because the Bible tells us about it. The Bible is very exact when it, when it tells us the story of Jesus. Oh, it tells us how he was born. It tells us how he lived. And it's descriptive in the way it tells us how he died. I read one portion. You, you were able to, to see in drama a portion from the, the book of John. You, you may know Matthew's account or, or Luke's account. You, you know that the Bible tells us about the death of Jesus, but it's not just in the Gospels that it does. The Bible in 1 Peter 3.18 says, For Christ also suffered, suffered once for sins for the righteous and the unrighteous to bring us to God. He was put to death in the body, but he was made alive in the spirit. I like the way the King James puts it because it says that he died for the just and the unjust. Look at your favorite neighbor and say, you're either the just or the unjust. Tell your favorite neighbor that right now. You see, being in church, being in church on Easter Sunday morning does not qualify us as the just or the righteous. 
Matthew 5 and 45, the Bible uses the same language. It says that it rains on the just and the unjust. When we come into God's house on Easter Sunday, we're not automatically classified as the just. Oh, that requires doing what the same Bible tells us to do. That we place our faith and trust in Jesus Christ. That we say to God that, that God, we believe that Jesus is your son. And that he died on a cross. That he died for my sins. And that he did it even before I knew him. And that I'm guilty of sin. That I have sinned. I have fallen short of God's glory. But that the free gift that he wants to offer to you and to me is salvation. The Bible says in Romans 10 and 9 and 10 that if I confess him with my mouth and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead, I will be saved. That, friend, is what makes you the just. I believe it because someone told me the story. I believe it because the Bible tells me. I believe it, number three, because it has stood the test of time. The resurrection of Jesus has stood the test of time. Oh, now listen. Don't think for a minute that Satan's not trying everything he can to find the body of Jesus. Oh, there would be nothing that would, would make... the make the devil happier than to disprove the resurrection. But you know as well as I do, he cannot. He aims all of his guns at disproving the resurrection. But he cannot. He is still trying to disrupt Easter. You may have woken up as I did this morning, and if you watched the news, you saw that in Sri Lanka last night, there were seven bombs that were exploded that over 150 people when I came to the church about 5 30 over 150 people were already reported dead at least three of the bombings that took place this Easter resurrection Sunday morning were placed in Sri Lanka churches where people were gathered for worship on Easter Sunday don't tell me that the devil is still not trying to disprove the resurrection of Jesus Christ but it stands the test of time he is risen he is risen indeed but I believe it number four not just because someone told me not just because the Bible tells me not just because it stood the test of time I believe that Jesus Christ died on a cross for my sins because I've experienced it I have experienced Jesus in my heart I personally have believed that Jesus died for my sins, not his. I believe in my heart that Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. I've experienced forgiveness from the blood of Jesus Christ. My question for just a quick brief moment in time is have you experienced personally the resurrection of Jesus Christ have you experienced the risen Savior have you come to terms with what Isaiah wrote a couple of thousand years before Jesus was crucified Look on the board and look at Isaiah 53 and, and follow along as I read it. It says it said that he was talking about Jesus, that he was despised and rejected by men, that he was a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering. Like one from whom men hide their face, he was despised and, and we esteemed him not. Surely he took our infirmities and he carried our sorrows, yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed or bruised for our iniquities. The punishments that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. I believe it. You see, I'm certain of that truth, that, that Jesus Christ died on a cross for my sins. But I'm certain today, secondly, that Christ arose from that grave. I am more convinced of it today than I was yesterday, than I was last year, than I was in 1972 when I prayed and received Christ 
as my Savior. It's been almost 2,000 years since Jesus rose from the grave. And I say almost 2,000 because I can chronologically, I can get us pretty close. Check it out. We know that Jesus lived 33 years here on earth. And we know that he was born sometime between 4 B.C. and 7 B.C. He, he, well, Jesus was not born at 0 A.D. Herod was not in power when, in 0 A.D. Herod was already dead. So, so it had to be before that. So I can just do a little bit of math. Just a little bit. I'm not a, a numbers guy, but I can do a little bit of math. And I can see that somewhere between 1,990 years ago and 1,993 years ago, somewhere in that ball frame, Jesus rose from the dead. And he is still risen. Today, we do not serve a dead Savior. We do not go to a, a tomb that contains the body of Jesus Christ. The truth is, He's alive. The truth is, He is alive and will be forevermore. There are over 300 verses concerning the resurrection of Jesus Christ in the New Testament. There are at least 12 times that after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, somebody saw him. Hey, very quickly, listen. His first one was to Mary Magdalene on that early Sunday morning. Mark 16 and John 20 tells us about that. He appeared to the women returning from the tomb in Matthew 28. Number three, he, was, he appeared to two disciples on the road to Emmaus. Number four, he appeared to Peter in Jerusalem. Number five, he appeared to the disciples and other followers. Even a second time with the two men from Emmaus, they were locked in a room in Jerusalem and doubting Thomas was not with them. Number six, a week later, Jesus appeared again to those same disciples and Thomas was with them. Number seven, to seven disciples on the shore of Galilee. Number eight, he was seen by over 500 believers at one time. Number nine, to James. Number 10, to the 11 on the Mount of Galilee before he ascended. He walked with his disciples. Number 11, on the road to Bethany. And then up to the Mount of Olives where he did ascend. And then number 12, he was seen by the Apostle Paul on the road to Damascus. Friends, he is alive. And we celebrate that today. But it only matters if you believe it. Because if... If I don't believe the resurrection, and I don't believe that Jesus Christ conquered death, I have no assurance of salvation and eternal security with God in heaven forevermore. I individually must believe it. Oh, please, 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 trust me. I would believe it for you if I could. But I can only believe it with you. And I want to believe it with you. I want you to believe it. I want us to believe it. I want us to believe it in the way that the disciples believed it. So that there could be a change in their life. And a change in our life. I want the resurrection to matter. I want, I want us to realize that Christ gave his life for us. That he gave his life for you. That he gave his life for each of us. Look at what the Bible says in, in Matthew 10. There the Bible says in 32 through 34 and then down in 45. This was before Jesus was crucified. Look at how he explained it to his disciples. And then I want to hone in on just one point. They were on their way to Jerusalem with Jesus leading the way. The disciples were astonished while those that followed him were afraid. And he took the twelve aside and he told them what was going to happen to him. He said, listen, we're going up to Jerusalem. And the Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priests and the teachers of the law. And they'll condemn him to death. And they'll hand him over to the Gentiles who will mock him, spit on him, flog him, and kill him. But three days later, he will rise. Now look at what it says down in verse 45. Same passage. Look at how he makes it personal for you and for me. He says, for even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. He gave his life for us. He gave his life for you. 
We celebrate that today. We celebrate He gave us something that we needed. He gave us something that we couldn't get on our own. And He gave us something that would last forever. I invited Christ into my heart in 1972. Just, just only the year, only the year. Would you just out loud? And, and it doesn't matter if we all do it at the same time or if you do it individually. What year was it? If you can remember what year, and you may not be able to remember what year, and that's cool too. But if you remember what year, what year was it when the resurrection became real to you? What year was it that you invited Jesus into your heart? What year was it when you truly accepted the risen Savior? What year was it for you? Somebody say it out loud. 1968. I heard Nancy say 68. Somebody else, say it out loud. 1944. 44, Miss Connie said. For you, I hope that you have at least something in your mind. You may not know the date. I know mine was in, in, in 1972. I, I can't get exact. I'm, 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 I know it was in 72 and, and it was close to Easter. And I hope that you have, I hope you have something in your mind that's concrete. I shared with Sammy and Maddie and Nick before I baptized them just a few minutes ago. I shared with them that y'all will forever be able to remember that you were baptized on Easter Sunday morning on the day that we celebrate our risen Savior. I hope you have that somewhere in your mind. A, a time that you can go back to and remember the time you believed in the resurrection. Hey, I close with this story. Out in the New Mexico desert, 50 miles away from the closest town is, is a little town called Fort Sumner. And there's not a whole lot in Fort Sumner. There's a, there's a, 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 a couple of stores. There's, there's, a, a, there, there's, there's a few homes. It's the, it's a, it's the residence of about 2,000 people. But there's something else there that people have been traveling to and will continue to travel to probably for as long as, as, as we're here on this earth. There's a there's a, a little cemetery just on the outside of town that, that holds the body of a man that was killed by Pat Garrett on the streets of, of Fort Sumner. Billy the Kid was killed in Fort Sumner at the hands of law enforcement officer Pat Garrett. Now, uh, I've been there. There's not a whole lot there. The little cemetery, there's not much there. In fact, uh, where, where Billy the Kid's grave is, they, the headstone has been stolen uh, three different times. And the headstone that's there now has uh, iron bars around it. it. It resembles more of a jail cell than it does a, 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 a cemetery plot. But the headstone, if you look at it, has, has little chips out all over it where people over the years have, have taken and, and knocked a piece of the headstone off so that they, they could have maybe a, a, a piece of granite, a piece of stone that from the headstone that marks the place where the body of, of Billy the Kid is buried. And thousands of people travel every year to look at a tomb that has a body in it that that was from someone that walked on this earth. Now there's, there's a little tomb in Jerusalem. There, there's, a, there's a little place in Jerusalem that, that y you can read on the inscription that, that it marks the tomb where Jesus' body was laid. And then no doubt, no doubt people probably have, have taken before it was regulated pieces of rock from there but but underneath the description of Billy the kid it starts with here lies Billy the kid the inscription of the little tomb in Jerusalem does not start by saying here lies the body of Jesus because my friend Jesus's body is not in that tomb he is risen and today we celebrate a risen Savior. He truly is 
alive. Now, would you bow your heads for just a second? And for just a brief moment in all of time, would you consider the question, do I truly believe it? I'm not so naive to think today that I convinced you. I'm not so naive to think today that every one of us believes it. I'm just gullible enough, gullible enough to believe that there might be one of us in here that has not believed it. That there might be one of us in here gathered on this resurrection Easter Sunday morning that has never personally received Jesus Christ as your Savior. And I'm just so naive to believe that it could happen. So in, in a conversation between you and God, it's not between you and me, it's not between you and the person beside you, but in a conversation between you and God, may I give you the opportunity today a chance to pray and receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. It doesn't take magic words. It doesn't take you having a passage of Scripture memorized. All it takes is you saying to God that you believe Jesus is His Son, that He died on a cross for your sins, and that He rose again on that third day. All you have to do is right where you are, invite Jesus into your heart. Would you consider doing that today if you've never done it? You might be here today and, and you find yourself like the disciples after the death of Jesus, discouraged, depressed, uh, 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 lost, walking through life, missing something. My prayer is today you, you were reminded that that missing something is Jesus. That he's alive for a reason. That he wants a relationship with you that's real, that's as vital and as active as it was with the disciples. Today, would you just allow God to renew in your mind his presence? And would you renew your commitment to him? You might be here today with something heavy on your heart. Listen, a risen Savior can conquer anything. He can conquer whatever it is that's on your heart now. You believe in the resurrection. You believe in the, the power of Jesus Christ to answer your prayers. You, you believe he can do anything. Almighty God, I pray that today as we have gathered for worship, that we have not missed a single thing that you wanted us to see, read, watch, or hear. I pray that we were good stewards with your time and that your spirit was enabled to flow freely through each of our hearts. Father, I pray that you would provide everything that is needed even at this exact moment in time. And I pray it in the blessed name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Would you stand, please?